Democratic presidential hopeful. I'm delighted he's with us. Andrew Yang thinks he has the answer and joins me now. Andrew, th first of all, thank you very much for being on with us tonight. We really appreciate it. Seattle is one of the most beautiful cities in the country. It just is. I mean, San Francisco, Seattle, uh, San Diego, the spectacular places. Um, what can be done that's not being done now in this beautiful city, given the leadership that's in place and given the enormity of the problems? Well, the cost of living in Seattle and San Francisco, um, both of them have skyrocketed over the last number of months. And so my plan would put $1,000 a month into the hands of every American adult, and that would create an economic incentive for cities to be able to invest in uh, people who are uh, struggling with substance abuse or homelessness, and hopefully get the economic resource in place to provide them a path forward, uh, and in some cases even access to shelter and housing. So you think a thousand bucks a month is going to make much of a difference here? Because it seems like we're way beyond that. I mean, I remember Gavin Newsom when he was mayor of San Francisco or on the city council. I think city council. He actually came in. It was a day I started my radio show. It was back in. Gosh, it was back in 2001, in April. He came in and he said, giving cash to the homeless was a disaster. So Gavin News said, that we, we did cards. So we gave them cards for f extra food, I think, and shelter maybe. But they found the cash payments didn't work at all. In fact, it just incentivized people to be more uh, or less industrious, I would say. Uh, and, and that's right. And Andrew, just, just on the money, according to Cato, I guess it was since uh, the war on poverty was declared, what was that, 1964? We've spent about $23 trillion. So didn't seem to help us, at least in the cities. Well, the question is, where did that money go, Laura? And my plan would put economic resources directly into our hands. And it would create, again, an economic path forward for many people who right now are struggling and don't have access to uh, so let's say treatment for substance abuse problems um, or mental health issues, because right now we have to face facts where these problems are growing in many of our cities uh, and our current programs are not well designed to handle this particular problem. Because in large part, if there's someone who's lying on the street, there's not right now an economic incentive to help that person get back on their feet. Right. The, the problem is, though, is you give a thousand bucks to a guy on the street, not everybody, some people are just down on their luck, but there is a significant percentage of people, and we know from just two blocks from where we are now, there's a homeless shelter. A lot of people have a lot of problems. There are drug problems. Uh, there's mental health issues. So giving a thousand bucks to a person who already has a mental health problem is probably not going to do the job. That, I mean, that's probably that money's probably going to go be quickly be spent on things that are going to get that individual into more problems. Uh, that's, I think, the concern of just giving cash to people because they're obviously not making good decisions, many of them, to get into the position they're in already in a very expensive city. But I want to read you a statement, hold on, Andrew, that you made just a few weeks ago to Newsweek. You said, when I've talked to Trump voters around the country, they've said that they're disappointed in what they've gotten from the administration. They feel like a lot of it was bluster in hot air, but a, a recent Goldman Sachs uh, study found that wage growth has picked up sharply. Bottom 50 percent of wage earners are making more. Consumer confidence is up. Got other metrics up at 71 percent since the beginning of, of polling on confidence in the economy. Things people think are going to get things are going to get better. So uh, this idea that nothing's working with Trump, I just think that's an overstatement at, at, at best. Well, I've been around the country now, and a lot of people don't feel like they're connected to a lot of the statistics that are coming out. And if you remember Donald Trump, the candidate, in 2015, he said that a lot of these headline unemployment numbers were misleading and they don't report what's happening on the ground. And then now that he's in the White House, he's singing a very different tune. Uh, the experience I'm having when I talk to voters around the country is that 78 percent of them are living paycheck to paycheck, 57 oh, percent yeah. can't afford an unexpected $500 bill. I think uh, you're right about that. There are yeah. a lot, there's a lot of people who still are, are vulnerable. They're still feeling insecure. But this is... This has been going on for, what, 20 years? They've had flatlining income for 18 years preceding Trump. Finally, it's going up. But it's back to leadership, though, Andrew, because I think you're someone, I don't maybe agree with you, but you're someone who <laughs> seems like you want to solve things. You want, you want to solve problems, and I respect that. Forbes says the top five cities in the United States with the largest home, homeless populations 
are the following. It's not surprising. So New York, L.A., Seattle, San Diego, San Jose. Now, four of five of these cities are run by Democrats. So how is liberal governance working out uh, for these cities? I mean, my hometown of Hartford, outside of Hartford, Connecticut, but Hartford, Connecticut, uh, it's, it's, it's having real problems, had problems for a long time. Always liberal leadership in Hartford. Detroit, Chicago has big challenges. It's not like these are raging conservative districts of the country, Andrew. Now, that's one reason why we need to build a trickle-up economy that works for everyone, by putting economic resources directly into people's hands. Because we're in the midst of this winner-take-all economy. You can certainly see it in our urban areas, where there are rich and poor uh, living next to each other in very different circumstances. And unfortunately, the dynamics of our economy are just going to become even more extremely polarized as technology starts transforming industries like retail, transportation, uh, food service, and on and on. So we need to wake up to the fact that we're in the midst of the greatest economic transformation in our country's history and start moving in a direction of just putting economic resources directly into our hands because we're the owners well, and shareholders handouts. of this that's country. Well, those are handouts. That's the problem. I mean, did anyone give you a handout to start uh, or work at Manhattan Prep? You started that, right? Was that your baby? That, well, that, that was my baby, and we've all had a uh, hand in, in different Yeah, but you did that... really well. You were really, I mean, you're a really successful entrepreneur, and well, you've done, you work really hard, we and know everyone that... gets help, but did anyone hand you a thousand bucks to get you going? I mean... Well, a lot of people, including entrepreneurs, have something uh, in the way you're of You're a capitalist, support. in other words. Yeah, you're a successful capitalist, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you've, you've, you've become a huge success because of the market and because of your hard work and because of your work ethic. All of that together, your family, I imagine. Not everybody has a family who supports them, but that all that combined to really work for you. Well, and that's the great thing about putting these economic resources into our hands is it'll give more people an opportunity to start businesses. It would create yeah. 2 million new jobs in the economy. It would reward hard work because right now many Americans might have a great idea, but they're stuck with their heads down and they're not able to, to build around them and build a, a new business. Okay, well, I, I maintain this is the best time in my lifetime to be an American. If you want to work and you want a job, it's it's only it's all the sky is the limit right now, I think. But Andrew, we really appreciate your joining us tonight. It's a really interesting conversation.